you for a definitive and declarative statement without ambiguity or deflection. As the person who speaks for the president, does the president denounce white supremacism and groups that espouse it in all their forms? This has been answered yesterday by the president himself, the day before by the president himself on the debate stage. The president was asked this. He said, sure, three times. Yesterday, he was point blank, blank asked, do you uh, denounce white supremacy? And he said, I've always denounced any form of that. I can go back and read for you um, in August 2019, in one voice, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. In August of 2017, racism is evil, and those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups. I have an entire list of these quotes that I can go through with you. But he has condemned to, white supremacy more than any president but, in but, modern history. Just to clear it up this morning, can you, naming it, make a declarative statement that you denounce, that the president denounces it? I just did. Uh, the president has denounced this repeatedly. The, the you, president was asked this. You're you just, making, you're contriving no, a storyline and a narrative. I'm just asking you to put he this said, to rest. I just did. I read you all of the quotes. And if you need quotes. to see them in can writing, I will put them in an email. Hold on. So, Kaylee, can, can, just, can you right now denounce white supremacy and the groups I that just espouse it? The president you has denounced white the supremacy, past. the KKK, and hate groups in all forms. He signed a resolution to that effect. Uh, the president just last week, perhaps you all weren't covering it, but just last week expressed his desire to see the KKK prosecuted as domestic terrorists. This president uh, had advocated for the death penalty for a white supremacist, the first federal execution in 17 years. His record on this is unmistakable, and it's shameful that the media refuses to cover it. Yes. Thank you. The FBI and the Department of Homeland Security say that racially motivated violent extremism is one of the deadliest threats that we face in the U.S. Does this White House agree with that assessment, and what is it doing to combat this threat? The president um, has done quite a bit to combat this threat. First of all, last week, he also, in addition to saying he wants to prosecute the KKK as domestic terrorists. He said uh, that lynching should be a national hate crime. Again, I think there's no stronger signal that you can send than advocating for the execution of a white supremacist the first time there's been a federal execution in 17 years. He's been unmistakable. It's different than actually doing it. He's continually condemned it, and it is really. The record on this, it is John's really is mixed. He it's, has condemned it, is not it. he's equivocated at times. He said he didn't want to acknowledge it or address it. His record is very mixed on this issue. His record is not mixed in the slightest and when you go back in history you can see that history right here when you go back in history you can see that Jesse Jackson it's has mixed. praised the president as someone who served underserved communities this president with Mar-a-Lago it was the first Palm Beach Club open to African Americans and Jews um, and in fact his record he is was, mixed he has he not was been praised. consistent on the issue he of white supremacy so I'm asking you what has this White House done it is quite to shameful. combat it is what quite the FBI says is one of the deadliest threats Paula. in this country we're not having a debate on a cable you're, news you're, you're, right now you're you saying that he finish. condemns it I have his record right here it's you mixed. need to let me finish his record it's is mixed. quite funny that the media goes haywire about interrupting in debates and then chooses to pursue and that very same tactic themselves. This is a White House briefing. You ask a question and you give me time to answer. Yes. Misogynistic, Islamophobic, anti-Semitic, anti-immigrant views. They're a despicable group by pretty much anyone's standard. So when the president was asked about them and you say he denounced them, that's what you're insisting that he did on the debate stage the other night. If that's the case, then why are they celebrating what the president said on the debate stage in front of millions of people? Well, I don't speak for that group, so I'm not sure why you're asking me why they're saying a certain thing. If someone denounced you, you probably wouldn't put it on a t-shirt and make badges of it, right? The president did denounce them. He was asked, will you tell them to stand down? He said, sure, and went on to stand. By, which seems like an instruction. He said, stand back. And then just yesterday when he was asked, he said specifically, stand down, um, a synonym with stand back. And the president said, sure, when asked by the moderator whether they should stand down. So no, again, he said another, it's, it's really interesting, too, to see that the media seems to be the only only one putting the names of these groups into headlines, into media reporting. Uh, he didn't know who the Proud Boys were. The first time I heard of them was in the debate. Uh, but the media uh, continues to put these names into circulation and give them a lot of public attention. It was given about Justin. 12 hours, more than that, since from the debate from when he was asked to clarify yesterday. And he didn't come out and clarify yesterday. Instead, he did what you did when John asked you to unambiguously denounce these groups. 
you just pointed to past things that you've said. You can't, I just don't understand why you knew you were going to get these questions and you don't have a statement ready to just say, we do unambiguously denounce these groups. Caitlin, and you know what is, do you know why people have lost trust in the media? There was a reporter from your network yesterday, your network, and in a tweet said, quote, the president, I'm asking you a question. What, I, I don't even know what you're going to bring up, but that has nothing to do I with what here, I'm asking you I right sat now. here when you lobbed your partisan attack question, so you will allow me to give an answer. The president and someone from your network said yesterday in a tweet, the president dodged a question about white supremacy. That was a tweet from a CNN reporter. The president specifically, verbatim, was asked yesterday, white supremacy, do you denounce them? To which he responded, I have always denounced any form of that. Those are the facts. And CNN, I know that truth is of no moment to your network, but those are the facts. He has yet once to condemn white supremacy, the neo-Nazis. He hasn't condemned the darn thing. You've got David Duke just joined. A bigot, a racist, a problem. Would you, I'm not looking would you repudiate for, David Duke? Sure. Uh, David Duke and robocalls are out again, the white supremacist movement supporting you. Uh, do you have any know. words for that? Well, I disavow. David Duke endorsed me? Okay. All right. I disavow, okay? When we looked at it and looked at the question, I disavowed David Duke. So I've disavowed David Duke all weekend long on Facebook, on Twitter, and really? obviously it's never enough. Really? So are you prepared right now to make a clear and unequivocal statement renouncing the support of all white supremacists? Of course I am. Of course I am. When Chris joined, we had a news conference, and they asked me the exact same question. I said, I disavow. I disavowed then. I disavowed today on ABC with George Stephanopoulos. I disavowed again. Uh, David Duke is a bad person who I disavowed on numerous occasions over the years. I totally disavow the Ku Klux Klan. I totally disavow David Duke. Ultimately, he got to the Ku Klux Klan, which obviously I'm going to disavow. I've rejected David Duke, rejected David Duke. Uh, I've rejected the uh, KKK, the Ku Klux Klan. David Duke is saying to his supporters and followers, vote for Donald Trump. White supremacists are saying, vote. do you want those votes? No, I don't want them, and I don't want him to say it. And yeah, you I want the supporters. No, I don't want anything. I, what do you think of white times? supremacists, by the way? I don't like any group of hate. David Duke announced his Senate candidacy, claiming your agenda. Are you ready before you ask the question? Newt Gingrich said every Republican should repudiate this guy I no did. matter what it takes. And I do. Rebuked. Is that okay? Rebuked. Rebuked. Done. Done. Do you want white supremacists to vote for you? No, I don't at all. Not at all. His campaign is denouncing a show of support from the KKK's official newspaper, as in the Ku Klux Klan. In the same New York Times interview, he denounced white supremacists. He denounced the neo-Nazis who support him. Racism is evil, and those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK neo-nazis white supremacists and you had people and i'm not talking about the neo-nazis and the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally i spoke out forcefully against hatred bigotry and violence and strongly condemned the neo-nazis the white supremacists and the kkk president donald trump signed a congressional joint resolution that condemns white supremacy neo-nazis and other hate groups in one voice our nation must condemn racism bigotry, and white supremacy. Any group of hate, I don't like it. Any group of hate, I am, whether it's white supremacy, whether it's any other kind of supremacy, whether it's Antifa, whether it's any group of hate, I am very concerned about it, and I'll do something about it. Uh, carrying the water for Democrats, the media, it apparently agrees with Jerry Nadler that Antifa violence is a myth. Um, in August Senate hearings, Democrats refused to condemn Antifa. Again, no journalistic curiosity here, despite the fact that Andy Najo, uh, who was a victim of Antifa, said Democrats have mastered, Democrats, he should add the media too, have mastered the art of making its violence appear innocuous. Um, their violence isn't innocuous. Antifa is not an idea. Um, Andy Najo can tell you that because he was beaten by a group of protesters, Antifa protesters, suffering brain bleed. Another man can tell you this, who in 2019, the victim, his name was Adam Kelly, suffered from a concussion and got 25 staples in his head, but still silence from Democrats, ignoring this group from Democrats. I mean, in fact, as we just saw recently, there was a Trump supporter who was killed by a 100% Antifa man. That is how he described himself. 
And again, no reporting here, but I guess I did the job of the media by getting this information myself. Uh, this man, who was 100% Antifa, this man, in fact, had been arrested before at 2 a.m. on July 5th in a public protest carrying an illegal weapon. He resisted arrest. Uh, he was taken to jail where he was merely given a citation, put back on the streets. And the very next month, this 100% Antifa man was lying in wait before he killed an innocent Trump supporter. Ideas do not target police officers. Ideas do not burn down buildings. Ideas do not kill innocent Americans. Organizations do. And Democrats should condemn the shameful group in the same manner President Trump continues to condemn white supremacy.